little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, good morning BigSwearRoadDrew.com with your morning corn of Z's Your sip of Chaga coffee There is so much news today, tomorrow, yesterday. It is getting insane. I'm going to do this Horn of Z's in two parts. First part, we're going to talk about stuff like this. PayPal to allow cryptocurrency buying, selling, and shopping on its network. Oh, my God. Is this a surprise? No, that's the amazing thing. This is not a surprise at all. They've been working on this forever. It's not working on a technology to do it. It's working on the moment to implement it, the moment to announce it. PayPal has been had this on the back shelf for over five years. It's been ready to go. Um, so have a lot of the banks. So have a lot of everything has been ready to go. <clears throat> we are almost ready to go. It, everything almost got implemented in 2017. The end of 2017, that was the original plan, and it got, boom, sidelined because a couple people, Chris Giancarlo, the head of the CFTC, Steve Mnuchin, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Donald Trump, of course, our brilliant, powerful president who can control any market. I am a 100% Trump fan. Don't get me wrong. I know why he's doing all this market rigging shit. But to take down the cabal, the cabal is about to be taken down. So, hey, what he's going to have no excuse after that. Then I'll turn into an angry Trump person. If we take out these bad guys and they continue to rig the markets, I'm going to be very anti-Trump. It's a warning, Mr. Trump. We've given you we've given you a long leash to rig markets all the way until we get these bad guys out. But after that, good night. And I don't think he'd do it anyway. <clears throat> anyway, uh, PayPal Holdings joined the cryptocurrency market on Wednesday, allowing customers to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin and virtual coins using U.S. digital payment payments companies' online wallets. PayPal customers will also be able to use cryptocurrencies to shop at 26 million merchants on the network. Starting in early 2021 on the network, what does that mean? Nobody knows. <laughs> Most likely, it'll be a not on chain transactions for PayPal. First of all, you couldn't do on chain transactions with most cryptocurrencies because it's just not fast enough. So, PayPal will act as the kind of the moderator, the mediator. They'll approve the transaction right away and then it'll go through the blockchain stuff. They'll probably be working from a pool. <laughs> the The good thing about all this is that it, it obviously shows cryptos are the way of the, of the future. The old system is dying because look at the date. They said January, early January, 2021. That's right when everybody said, oh, the, the, you know, we're in year zero. At December 31st, it's year one. So <laughs> everything's happening between now and then. Um, the, the interesting thing on the road to Ruta, I, I have all kinds of people on the road to Ruta. I love them all. Some infuriate me beyond belief, but hey, that's it's true with me and with everything. I have a love-hate relationship with everybody. I don't know what it is about me, but I'm very combative sometimes. But at the same time, I'm finally having people email me. If you followed the road to Ruta long enough, <laughs> I got into cryptos in 2013. 2013, I got a like a seed in my mouth. <laughs> 2013, and I wasn't fully bought in. I was like, oh my God, at first I hated cryptos. I didn't understand them. But I have people who still don't understand them, still don't. And I'm finally getting emails saying, oh my God, I can't believe this. You might have been right after seven years. <laughs> oh my God, it's funny. I love them all. Don't get me wrong. All you road to Ruta people who have emailed me over the years, Bix, you don't know what you're talking about. It's gold and silver only. What are you thinking? <laughs> and then people I fight with online, like Chris Dwayne, that still doesn't understand cryptocurrencies, which is amazing. But hey, everybody's got their their understanding and I more power to you. If, if, if you want to focus on one thing and that's the beauty about free markets is you can place your bets. Place your bets. I'm going to place my bet on silver and cryptos, only certain cryptos. And we're going to see who wins and who loses. And ultimately, <clears throat> at the end of the day, you're either going to be right or wrong, right? All right. So, yes, um, great news about 
everybody who uses PayPal is going to have access to cryptocurrencies. Obviously, as they go up, people start saying, oh, my God, Litecoin. Have you seen my Litecoin? I can't wait for those days. By the way, I can't wait for those days. Here's one, something I want to show you, which is I think it's great. Um, everybody says, oh, it picks. Everything's bad. The, the future of, of everything is bad. And they're going to ban cryptos. I love the ones that say, they're going to ban cryptos, Bix. You're an idiot. They're going to ban cryptos. Who's the idiot now? <laughs> U.S. crypto derivative merchants caution to leave customer funds. Whoa. What the hell is BACT going to do if they can't if they can't rig the markets using uh, multiple wallets, hidden wallets? I wish they would implement this in, in silver, too. Uh, CFTC has released guidance on Wednesday evening. <clears throat> Remember, the, the crypto exchanges were unregulated forever. Now it looks like they're regulated. So what are all these exchanges going to do? What was Binance doing with all that data? That's part two of this. You're going to get a kick out of that. Um, release guidance on Wednesday. This guidance advised businesses that partook in crypto derivative trading to hold funds of their customers very carefully. CFTC is focusing on crypto derivatives. This new guidance stands in the next development in the as the next development in the keen interest the CFTC has when it comes to carrying out the rules regarding cryptocurrency, crypto custodianship. Crypto stands as an asset class all on its own and thus needs special regulations regarding it. The CFTC highlighted the virtual currency custodians, meaning whoever holds cryptocurrency for their customers or, or cryptocurrency derivatives for their customers. Hello, Coinbase. Hello, Binance. Hello, Bact. Uh, this includes regulations regarding the safeguarding of these assets, which sub sub subsequently causes risk for customers' funds held at these custodians and protection it receives. Only certain firms are allowed for custodianship. As for the guidance-specific provisions, it limits the locations where a futures commission merchant, FCM, is allowed to deposit the virtual currency of a customer. Now, this is going to, I mean, obviously, they're starting with futures of cryptocurrency. And there's so much fraud there, it is ridiculous. It's just like silver. By the way, why don't they implement this for silver, too? Right? Because we know the SLV inventory, the one custodian of SLV, which is JP Morgan, completely derivatizes the derivatives of the physical silver. It's on swap. It's on loan. It's, it's held at 50 different places all around the world, depending on where their books. It's all done on computers. It's ridiculous. They are now mandated to only place at a trust company, a bank, a clearing organization that clears virtual currency futures or other FCM. Well, that doesn't help you, does it? You're required to hold it at a bank. <clears throat> it's like it's like telling a bank a bank robber. It's like telling a a customer you're required to hold your money at a bank robber's house. <laughs> That's what the banks do. So hopefully they'll they'll hammer down these banks. I think they have already uh, with the J.P. Morgan ruling. I don't think it's J.P. Morgan rigging silver right now. I think it's a combination of BlackRock and Virtu Financial. That'll get to that in a second. But so all, what does all this mean? It means the regulators are coming into cryptos. I've been screaming it for so long. If you have an ICO, you're going to be under scrutiny. A crypto with an ICO will be under scrutiny. Unless they have some blanket, hey, you're all forgiven. I think it'll be more like pick and choose the people who really abused it. The people who ICO'd after the DAO announcement on July of 2017. Anything after that, I don't know. I would say they will go after those companies if they're still around, if they're successful. They'll claw back. It the moment the the SEC or the CFTC announces that this cryptocurrency did it all wrong, boom, that cryptocurrency is done for life. Possibly for life. Look what they did to Reggie Middleton. Reggie Middleton invented a way to fix the problem long before the CFTC came around. He was working with the CFTC for over a year. And then somebody decided, click, we're going to shut it down. And they, by the way, 98 million Veritasium tokens are still frozen in limbo. Keep an eye out for Cliff's data that the U.S. government comes to Veritasium 
comes to Reggie Middleton to help solve the problem. And the problem is massive, massive, massive rehypothecation of assets, which this is starting to address, but the trading of derivatives on the markets. Take a look at silver, for example. It's just ridiculous how many how many silver trades happen during a given day with no miners hedging their production. Zero. There aren't any miners heavy hedging their production. Who? Why? All these questions about why there is even a silver. I know why there's a silver futures and options market. The, the concept is there are people who need should hedge their pr production. For example, uh, brokers and dealers of silver that have inventory. But do they really need to trade almost a half a billion ounces of futures and options every single day? Do they really need to do that? Are they really holding inventories and churning inventories? Remember, most people who have silver inventories, for example, coin dealers, like Miles Franklin, for example, they'll hedge their inventory. When they have a lot of inventory, they'll hedge it. But do they trade their hedge four or five times a day? No. When, when do they add and subtract hedges? When big deals come in. And they probably have a hedge on their base inventory that they don't, it doesn't trade back and forth. So, but that's all. And maybe jewelry manufacturers keep, everybody says, oh yeah, jewelry manufacturers have to have big inventories. They don't have to have big inventories. It's ridiculous to have big inventories unless there's a reason. Why would a jewelry manufacturer hold a gigantic inventory of pre processed silver? Now they might have big inventories of, of, silver jewelry and gold jewelry okay i get it but not not a half a billion i think there's a half a billion ounces that trade and you wouldn't trade it every day either i mean i get that that uh, silver jewelers will have inventory that sits on the floor for a while and they want to hedge their risk i get that but it, they don't trade it they have a certain amount of inventory they'll sell a ring for five thousand times the markup because it's a piece of art so there is no legitimate reason for half a billion ounces of silver to trade every single day on this freaking criminal market. And it, it, they've begun to shut it down. They haven't shut it down. Keep an eye on December, delivery month. Right now we're looking at December, 128,000 silver futures contracts times 5,000. That's, I'm going to do this in my head. 650 million ounces that could be stood for delivery if the month was over right now. 650, sorry, 650 million ounces. 650 million ounces of physical silver ready to be delivered. Of course, it won't happen. I think it'll be a big silver delivery month, especially because we're at the end of this crazy, crazy time. <laughs> 100 and what, 90, 107 years? 108 years. No, it was December. It was December of 1913 that the Federal Reserve uh, Act was signed into law. Woodrow Wilson was required to do it because of the gold in the Grand Canyon. So we're at 107 years of pure market manipulation, pure the lies, the amount of lies we've been told, the wars that have been fought over, the stupidity of trying to hide all those gold in the Grand Canyon. We need to know who we are. And those of you hoping for, oh, we got Nestra and Jessera and we got gold to back it up, good luck. Uh, watch watch Word Wednesday with Paige. I posted it yesterday. We talked about Nestor and Jessera. People are really angry at me because I call, <laughs> I say, it's it's bullshit. I'm sorry. I've been I've been dealing with this bullshit since Nestor and Jessera, I think, came out in the 50s and 60s. The concept is good. Let's go back to a sound system. The the thought and the idea that there's going to be people deciding who how this is done so that nobody is hurt, they won't lose their 401k is bullshit. You got to you got to end everything. You got to destroy the old system or you can't move forward. There's no way to move forward unless you destroy the the evil sins of the past, and that's real easy. Just don't bail out the banks, put a couple of them in jail, boom, the system shuts down. And then we restart. How do we restart? We got to allocate money to the the population. Whatever we use is money, whatever we decide. It won't be gold. Why? Because nobody knows how much is out there. 
Money is all about supply and demand. It might be Bitcoin. We know there's 21 million Bitcoin. We know there's 84 million Litecoin. That'd be a good idea. <clears throat> anyway, I digress. Um, anyway, I'm going to start. Well, let's finish up on silver right here. Um, this drop in silver of 50 cents uh, this morning is the same reason it went up 50 cents yesterday. It is a, a company called Virtu Financial and BlackRock. They are teaming up to rig the price of silver. They're the new riggers on the block. The, they're really easy to take out. Um, they do not, and let me talk, you know, say this as loud as I can, they do not fully, fully understand the ramifications of having any shorts on the comics, unless you're fully hedged, and that is not what uh, Virtu Financial does. They're an electronic high-frequency trading company run by Vincent Viola. And they've been an authorized participant in SLV since the day it was born. Except back then it wasn't called Virtu Financial. It was called EWT LLC. And I called it out back when they, it first started. Um, so Vincent Viola and Bernie Madoff were co-heads of the largest uh, exchanges on planet Earth, the, the NYMEX and the NASDAQ. And they split off to run the cr criminal operations of uh, computer market rigging. That's what that's what uh, uh, Bernie Madoff was really doing on the second floor of Madoff Investment. Whew! This is why I said it. we got to go two parts. So I'm going to start the second part off with uh, some more silver. I'm going to get into Theta and get into why the Binance, why did Binance... Um, redistribute shall we say their uh, theta hot wallet 60 million theta coins have been and where we are right now it's gonna be really good so go look for uh horn of z's part two i don't know what i'm gonna call it yet but go to roadtoru.com like and subscribe go to uh oh be before i forget i have a jenny moonstone talk today obviously we have massive things to talk about haven't done one of these in in two weeks so much going on with q and Biden and silver and gold and the silver knights and finding Sibylla and oh my god it's gonna be great uh, I think I'm gonna post four of them on the uh, Friday road trip for private road members right now there's a whole bunch of them on here amazing stuff Jenny is just unbelievable go to JennyMoonstone.com and schedule a reading with her JennyMoonstone.com I think her schedule's freed up in certain areas and you can get a reading now. And I know a lot of people tried and they couldn't get it. <clears throat> Go to JennyMoonstone.com and sign up. All right. And this is Big Square. I will talk to you in part two. Look for it.